A 3D corridor model requires three different components, an alignment, a profile, and a typical cross-section. In Civil 3D, these typical cross-sections are called assemblies. Assemblies are built from sub-assemblies, which are the basic building blocks for your corridor cross-section. Sub-assemblies are found on tool palettes in Civil 3D, and the program ships with a wide variety of sub-assemblies that you can use to build your typical cross-section. We actually have some basic assemblies that we can drag and drop from the tool palettes into our drawing space, but I'm going to go ahead and create one of my own. When you're selecting these components, these sub-assemblies, to attach to your assembly, do not use O-snaps. All you're going to do is hover over the marker, use your left mouse button to click it, and it will attach automatically where it's supposed to. Using O-snaps will cause the intelligence to be broken, and your subassembly will thus be broken. You can see that I'm going through and just simply clicking and adding on parts. I've added a lane, I've added a curb and gutter, and I've added a sidewalk. Now let's add a daylight subassembly. Subassemblies are comprised of three different parts, points, links, and shapes. These shapes contain the quantity data uh, for the materials that we're going to use to build our roadway with. To edit a subassembly, I simply go to the Properties dialog, and you can see that uh, all of the bold text, or not grayed out text, can be edited. Here I can edit the width of my subassembly, the slope, uh, the various material depths. Uh, this particular subassembly is the uh, uh, Lane uh, Super Elevation AOR, I believe. And it has four layers of materials, pave one, pave two, base, and sub-base. And you can see as I greatly exaggerate these values that they do change in real time. We also have options for other intelligence, such as utilizing super elevation on the alignment and the way that the lane slopes away from, away from or toward the crown of the road. To find what all of these options actually do, you can right click on the image in your tool palette and select help. Each subassembly that comes with Civil 3D has a very extensive help file that identifies all of the attachment points, input, and target parameters, uh, basically tells you everything that you can do with this subassembly. Uh, it also tells you in certain cases the use case for a particular subassembly in case it's not very obvious. You'll see that we have subassemblies for just basic subassemblies. We have lanes. We have shoulders, medians, we have curbs, uh, daylight. There are a number of generic subassemblies to cover other situations that uh, you don't necessarily have built here in the box. We have conditional subassemblies that test for conditions and return a true false. Then we have trench pipes, we have retaining walls. We have rehab subassemblies, and then we have bridge and rail subassemblies. Now, if you'll notice, all of this is on the right side of my assembly. I can simply select a subassembly, right click, and select mirror, and then pick the point with which I want to mirror it. Again, don't use your O snaps. We're simply going to select the assembly there. As I mirror my curb, you'll notice that I move in and select the edge of pavement on the left side of the road. And then I can also add and change directly from the properties dialog. 
Now, this is the typical cross section that we're going to be using for our project. Uh, the one thing that I notice that it doesn't have is uh, there's a little concrete median uh, that's got some nice little fillet radiuses there. Uh, we don't have those inside Civil 3D, so we're going to have to make it. And we're going to make that little median in a program called SubAssembly Composer. That's going to be our next lesson.